that's the biggest thing that I tell my clients is like where, where they can start something for free and like something that's easy uh, is be more vulnerable, be a storyteller at your own. Cause again, you're telling your own story, but understand when you're telling your story brand, like you're not telling this is like, Oh, hire me. I'm, I'm everything. I'm the greatest. You're talking about your brand, how it can come in and talk, you know, and deliver greatness. And like what, you know, like if I'm here in your journey and your path, I'm explaining to you how your path is amazing, right? Mm -hmm. But it's going to be so much better with my product. <laughs> and oh, here's yeah. why. The Move Entrepreneur Evolved Podcast. Get on it. All right. I'm super pumped to have a totally new guest on the show. I uh, look forward to not only learning from him, but also hearing some incredible stories about entrepreneurship and uh, learning to be successful in this crazy environment as well. We've got Wes Cunningham, a storyteller, brand therapist, photographer, cannibal, cannibal, <laughs> cannabis advocate, videographer, and definitely a Brazilian jiu-jitsu advocate, which I enjoy that as well. Great to have you, my friend. Appreciate you. Thank you, Jason, for having me on. Um, this is great, uh, what you're doing, especially for your group and uh, your community as well. So thanks, uh, yeah, for having me on. You're right on, man. Hey, real quick, I saw you just do this. Did you live in, uh, did you live in any other countries in your life? Time? <clears throat> no, uh, no other countries. I picked that up along the way of just like uh, doing just martial arts and Muay Thai or uh, ta uh, Taekwondo, just always in the bowing concept, uh, even in jujitsu, just knuckling up at how we do. It's just, I've always just had a habit of just like appreciate you or you know, or the, even the emoji, right? So, yeah, I lived in um, India and in the Philippines, and I, I and I lived in Thailand. Thailand was the first time that I experienced anything of that type of culture transition. Yeah. And at first, I was like, ah, yeah. And next thing you know, it I'm like doing it to everybody. Then I moved back to the states, and then what? I'm doing it to like people. And I'm like, hey, thanks for bagging my groceries. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, wow, you know, I'm kind of a different. I've learned some things, and I've brought them on. So. Talking about business, um, your experiences started off in photography. Is that right? For sure. Like it was definitely just wanting to be a creative at heart. <clears throat> and um, I just wanted, I've actually just wanted to make my living just by my, the means of my camera uh, come a hell of high or high water. I was uh, even putting my application into like a JC Penney's um, family photographer or babies are us here locally. And I was going to try to do my best just to be a photographer at all means. And But as I jumped out here, I quickly realized I needed to diversify. And that's when I started branching out into videography and then understanding how to use my the, the things I was recording, the things I was doing. And it really made me a better storyteller. It made me think about things and angles and different perspectives a lot. And then from there, just like started building just my business from there and like understanding like you have to be multifaceted out in the business world being a creative because at the end of the day with our cell phones, like they're making it so easy to be a photographer or videographer. They're editing things for you nowadays, I you know, and uh, I think that's a good place to kind of dive in a little bit. And <coughs> as we transition or as business to start to transition, uh, they're trying to figure out what are the apparatuses what are the things that i have to have do i have to have a gopro do i have to have you know a, a canon do i have to have something older what is it and most of us have you know just regular iphone or you have an android what do you think in photography or in videography that makes that difference of when you hire somebody to actually do that compared to maybe you doing it on your own Oh, it's, it really just falls back onto what's the end goal. If somebody was, if I'm facilitating a situation where I'm helping somebody do that, either find a budget to spend on the, a new camera rig or uh, trying to take their, you know, production to the next level and hire out, like, right. What are, what are they trying to do? What's the end goal here that I'm asking? Cause sometimes if they're going to be shooting a lot of these things uh, it would be a good investment just to buy your own and then, you know, understand how to use it in the setup. And uh, that's why I've kind of diversified my business as well. It's like uh, we, we either, you know, help you DIY it. Mm -hmm. We help you along with it. And we tell you, like basically DIY tell you, or we, just so everybody knows here. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So DIY, do it yourself. Yeah. So we understand like there's there's levels of engagement of where you want to be, or what your bigger uh, the bigger hairy audacious goal is, right? So we want to know that then how we build backwards, because from once you start talking about different cameras, that's a pretty investment. That's a that's a very pretty you know pretty penny, and but each one of these cameras are going to tell a different kind of story different they're used for different angles right if all you have is a gopro you know it's just that old saying goes if all you have is a hammer everything starts to look like a nail you need to put more tools in your arsenal and put more tools in your toolbox before you really start branching out and understand how to use these at different times because not everybody needs a gopro yeah and because you have deep knowledge in this we have a lot of people that generate ads and we always say look just generate your use your phone for crying out loud like get your message out there but I do think that you would agree that there comes a point when a, when a brand hits a certain threshold where they make a decision to become quality, <laughs> I guess you would say, or you, you would say, look, we're going to try and represent ourselves in more of a story brand. So would you say that advertising may, or branding and advertising may use video in two different ways? Agree. Yeah, totally. Um, it's almost, I've heard it before too. It's like, what, what comes first, the chicken or the egg, right? Branding or marketing. Mm. Well, they say if you got a uh, actual product that's actually going ready to go to the market, they say, obviously invest first in the marketing. It gets the thing, it gets the word out there. And so I think what that, how, how fast that needs to turn over rate and the things that you could do with click funnels nowadays and these little landing pages a video is all you need sometimes a cell phone video just holding it up talking about your product and talking about your uh you know your your study course right like we see this all the time so there's there are those different kind of quality of uh of ads but at the same time as it's 2020 21 you know 21 comes around 2022 like the technology is going to get better everything's going to be more and pristine they've actually said that the uh, shoot, shooting it raw being very vulnerable and open is testing higher than the premium well thought out well production you know with the high production side it's actually performing well with the cell phones so it all just depends do you think that that's and it kind of i've thought about this as well um do you think that that is because the effect the performance of um connecting to a personal brand is easy when you're actually communicating because you're watching that person's daily attributes. But what would you say would be the difference in why I would create a story brand compared to when in fact, I guess it just would be a longer story brand, right? But ultimately really sit down and go, okay, yes, I'm advertising this way. Yes, I'm sharing my story. Yes, I tell it this way. But theatrics and you know that kind of stuff where where, where does that come in in someone because that again that's where you got to ask your yourself or your client or your what you're trying to do here is like what's the end goal so what is going to be needed does is the brand going because all brands will mature right you will go through these different phases of startup to you know like got it has it going on and you'll have different renditions of uh the logos of what it might look like right so everybody you know so brand, the brands age and whether they age well is all up to the individual, like what they're trying to do. Because some brands don't age well and then they get, they get faded out, right? We see it all the time. But if you really start understanding they, what- they, And then 20 years later, they bring them back. <laughs> yeah. If, if, if they don't get the cancel culture, you know, it doesn't come get them first. You know, look at Abercrombie and Finch. Look at, uh, you know, uh, what they did, they- glamorize the model the model physique in the body and now you know it doesn't that doesn't set well with the audience so they lost they had a disconnect there between their marketing and their projection of where they needed to be and plus their ceo got in trouble a couple of times by being kind of kind of rit- ridiculous in the uh, tabloids or the that article story is kind of crazy i remember when abercrombie <coughs> kind of was pushed and, and you'd see him in the malls and everything like that and you kind of were for a minute you're like is that yeah. really, is this really happening? You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, we're half naked in the mall, you know? I'm, I'm, yeah, but that you gotta think it's a disruptor, you know, it's just something to stir up con- controversy. Yeah. And that's too, so when you think about in your investment in your brand, yeah, videos is, is, is right there pretty good. It gets up there in different checks because it's building a brand is all about scaffolding. 
So different, t different things you might need at different times. So if, like you said, like when you're ready to like elevate the brand or make the brand, the story, whether even if you have a good story brand and you want to refine it and give it a whole new like emphasis and like bigger light, shed bigger light on it. So you do need more videos to support that, right? That's kind of what the direction would go. That's where you gotta start thinking, okay, well, how much do I wanna invest? What's a good comfortable range for me? And what, what is the outcome that I'm trying to do? Then you, from there, if you wanna hire out or buy your own, you gotta see what's the most cost effective and whether, like you said yourself, like, uh, you know, there's so many things out here and there's so many things I could try and there's only 24 hours in a day. Like what direction do I really wanna go? Mm -hmm. Like, how much do I really wanna mess with it yeah. or do I wanna hire out? And so, and then when you start hiring out, it's, you just start seeing who you, the individuals that you can work with and the kind of quality and consistency that they've put out <clears throat> and see how they, you know, just talk to them. So in this, in, in the world of video, um, where do people stand on, on making a decision to, to hire someone to spend their entire time to video them? You know, what was it? That D rock guy with uh, Gary V, right? And mm -hmm. I remember, actually, I remember um, P. Diddy and he was like, I'm going to be the first one. And he probably wasn't. I was just on his feed. But basically, he was like, I'm going to be the first one that's going to have someone dedicated. And they're going to be videoing all my stuff. And I was like, man, you're really going to hire someone for that? And then you look back and how much that cost him to do for how much content he got. It's mm -hmm. like, holy smokes. But at what point do you think that there's this side of people are like, I just don't want a camera in my face all the time. Um, and that's when, again, at the end of the day, like, what are they trying to do with what, yeah. what they're trying to do? Because if they, there's certain ways to get a, go about it without having a camera in their face all the time, then you better be good with your words. And the, cause if you can articulate, you can develop a voice in a brand and through obviously print and stuff, it doesn't have to be video. You could have very strong words and have a blog, you know, but it just video stuff. And that's the thing. You don't have to be a YouTuber. You don't have to be a blogger. Mm. You can stand, you know, you can position. It's all in how you position yourself. You want to be positioned like, and at the end of the day too, you like, you know, why he's being a better salesman to you about your business than you are. So nobody knows the vision better than you. So again, yeah. You, if you position yourself, like you mentioned on a personal brand, it's going to be hard not to really get yourself out front because we really believe on different, like with my business, we believe on values of trust is transparency. Like if you understand what we're doing behind the scenes, like if you understand like what, what it is that I, my mission and, you know, vision is obviously my business in life. Um, it really breaks down to whether you like me or not. And, and so, and I, I, you know, I'm a very personable, friendly guy. I have a lot of big energy. And that's me being a facilitator. And like in my business, that's what I've understood. Like, okay, so I know how to, you know, kind of, you know, uh, navigate this mm -hmm. and share this energy and kind of get people riled up. Cause in entrepreneurship, it is hard. It is scary. It is like, what direction should I take? And like all these self doubts, cause there's so much content that people are consuming, you know, out in the world that's telling them one thing and then another person's telling them another. So it can develop hesitance and like imposter syndrome. And what do you uh, think, I think that's, that opens up something right there. What do you think it is that people hesitate to get on, on video? I mean, do you think some people just have it? Um, do you think that they were taught it when they were young? Do you think what, what has been your um, behind the camera? Uh, you know, obviously I was going to have an opinion, but you obviously have this behind the camera and you watch it, right? You watch this mm -hmm. type of thing happen. And it's like right in front and you're like this is happening right now you're like morphing i think i was actually i was uh, listening to like joe rogan or something he was talking about you know when elon musk came in and he sat down in the podcast he's like we were in the back and right when he sat down it was like instant he just kind of changed and didn't know and you're like this is somebody that's in front of these things all the time so what are some things that you see yeah. in transition that people <clears throat> maybe could work on on video <laughs> or should you just have yeah. a better actor <laughs> so a lot of times because again like yeah it's but sometimes it's like the brand it needs the individual to really represent it and sell it um so in like if it is hard to get out in front of the camera it is hard to get out and be a public speaker i i struggle with that myself and when i start really i realizing that I need to either a get out front of the camera or b get out front and start talking because I was always a salesman anyways. 
but I really learned I need I needed the good techniques. I needed like just do like jujitsu, understand I could acquire things, I could put tools in my tool belt. And so I start putting myself in these Toastmaster groups and making myself go talk <clears throat> and whatever platform I could get on and start speaking to people. Uh, that's what I would try to do, uh, to try to really understand my technique and my style of how I could deliver something, how I can, how I communicated and things that I would need to make me better. Right. Uh, I really started dissecting comedians. I love comedy. Right. And if you start understanding this comedians, they say the same joke, how many times a month, right. Or how many times a week they're just saying that same joke. So that's where you hear Joe Rogan or different people talk about tightening up their, you know, their, their, uh, their, uh, or their, you know, the other pitch or their, you know, whatever they're doing, they're looking for those punchlines. They're looking for those key words. That's that gets the brand message out or the values, the quickest, the most efficient and the clearest way you can. Because if you understand psychology as a human being, we don't have very much uh, attention spans, you know, and we, we, we will shut down and like kind of glaze over if we start using big words and things we don't understand yeah. you know you'll start glazing over or if it's just not you know interesting enough there's not enough theatrics and like not enough movement and tonality change say um in video would you say that you just said a really good word is like theatrics right so in theatrics does everybody need theatrics or what is a theatric that somebody can do in a video in a as a business entering into a video what is something that they could do that would be like so and that's where uh you'd understand like you start you would start like looking up speech and like or different speech speeches and different techniques of communication that's really what i started obviously diving down deep into um but when i say techniques of like tonality understanding not to be talking monotone and like blah, 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 you know put some energy smile because once you learn how to like that's the same thing with uh, photography if I catch people being um, like un, 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 you know, unexpected, can, like very candid, I can get a really great smile because it was intentional. It was just like, oh, hi, you know, yes. It was like, pop, 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 pop. You know, it, that's a lot more genuine than be like, eh. <laughs> you know, being awkward and uh, uncomfortable. And so, and that's another thing too, that I've really learned within storytelling or getting in front of a camera or audience is just kind of what I'm doing now. I'm being vulnerable. Mm -hmm. I'm being open. Like I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I don't know it all, you know, but I've, I've experienced a lot and I've understood and extracted lessons out of what I've, uh, my experiences. Right. And so these vulnerability allows you to be like, it really disarms your audience. It disarms your, who you're engaging with. So you're able to have dialogue. I'm not coming here to with my ego saying I'm better than you. Sure. I'm coming sure. here to you as the student, as the forever teacher, back and forth, you know. And I think that's a lot of things. Maybe an interesting experiment um, would be to give somebody a phone and there's no input. They can only give output. Mm -hmm. So you're only able to see certain things, but you are a creator. So you have to create output. And, and I wonder there's probably a few things that would happen is you would probably not have as many things to try to pull from to create creativity, right? That would probably be yeah. difficult. Um, but it would be interesting to see what creativity you do create because we have so much information coming at us all the time. Mm -hmm. You know? So I'm going to yeah. change it here real quick. So um, in business, you transition and you had made some transitions in your business as well. And I noticed that you were going after some of the cannabis uh, industry as well. Um, let's talk about, you know, it was really funny. I, I saw it. It was, um, I actually took this picture here. It was pretty, pretty <coughs> uh, and, and talk about getting, trying to get someone's attention. And it was they it was a picture give me one second oh no here it was it said weed now that i have your attention mark's lawn care <laughs> that's so dope i love when they play on words like that <laughs> so it wasn't even weed but i just thought it was really funny so 
in in the other sense, if you look at what is going on in the cannabis industry, what a crazy wild ride, right? Especially to be on the back end or to be on the marketing because you're watching the failures happen. What are some of the things that you're seeing in the cannabis industry when it comes to marketing or when it comes to presentation? <clears throat> oh man, I'm seeing so much from different aspects because I am myself as a, as a, I'm a patient myself. So I'm experiencing this from all perspectives and all like angles that I can like, cause I grew up on a ranch as well. So I really had a big connection with the farmers and the, you know, the ones out there in the soil. And I'm seeing that, th I mean, I've shot different products for the dispensary. So I've seen it at the seed to sell all the way in, in between <clears throat> and experience it with different individuals. And uh, a lot of, I'm seeing a, when in the beginning, obviously we've only been two and a half years, maybe, you know, going on three years here, I think here in Oklahoma. And yeah, there was a lot of saturation. There's a lot of, there's a lot of exposure, explosion of, you know, stores and dispensaries and people growing up, like popping up. And uh, you see, you know, I seen a lot of copying very quickly. It was like templates, just very, just everything throwing up from GoDaddy, different uh, websites, just, you know, just trying to get it up there as fast as they can, as soon as they could. <clears throat> and then really understanding really where they wanted to be, like they were just shooting content. Some of them was good, some of them wasn't. Um, and that's where I realized, because from seeing from a, a more mature markets like Oregon, California, Colorado, I was seeing their social medias, how they was like, oh, they was really like, you know, curated and they was really, they look the aesthetically pleasing. They all aesthetically went together. And I was like, man, if somebody could do that here, you know, somebody could, you know, that'd be ahead of the curve. And so I really quickly realized that um, I wanted to shoot cannabis and start really uh, just, tra you know, transitioning the stereotype, right? Like I wanted to shoot it as like food, like as understanding, like this is medicine, like in the same as you know aesthetic as you would you know a dessert or you know something that's an awesome well, I can tell burger you, anybody that's ever seen anybody shoot weed it's like uh, what i don't know what what uh lens are you using to shoot i was using just a 100 millimeter macro because i'm telling you you're picking everything up and anybody that's ever, yeah if, if any, anybody that's ever been marketing <laughs> it in anything is like, you literally will look at the pictures of it and you're like this is under a microscope and the marketing yeah. is they want you to see what what's the number one thing that they probably want you to see in the marketing oh they want to obviously they want to see the tri the trichomes they want to see the what's sticky icky yeah the trichomes they want to see it when it comes out and the resin or rosin or how they uh but basically it's the thc that you're smoking like it's going to be that's what's getting you high and you can see as different ones, you can see them come out and like, uh, cause that's how they too, how they check them sometimes during the harvesting time. Cause if you let a sativa go too long, you'll see the actual trichomes go from clear to cloudy to like a, a darker color because it's getting, it's going to, it's turning more indica. Um, so they, they actually look at those trichomes to see kind of when they're ready, when they're ripe to, uh, to be harvested. So, and then you shoot those for the marketing material. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, any kind of like uh, business cards and stuff or, you know, mark, yeah, marketing material, basically there's signs that they might use. Um, yeah, that's it's been um, in that industry. It's quite common that it's getting, it gets either shut down or it, they're not compliant and all those things. But before that, if we talk about marketing and we talk about accessibility or even things like right now what just happened menthol cigarettes right they just got pulled and, and i'm okay with that i mean you could get yeah. rid of cigarettes in the whole world if you ask me i don't know if yeah. you, i'll tell you this if you go to like indonesia or you go anything else and you look at a pack of cigarettes you will never see anything worse than a pack of cigarettes in the photography and what they're trying to tell you it is the worst thing you'll ever see you'll never want to do we'll never want to smoke again they literally put a lung on there yeah you know, That's I mean, insane. they'll put a mouth with like no teeth, you know, and then you, and then the person that's buying the cigarettes, oh man, you know, I'll take that one. <laughs> but right. to each his own, it's freedom. But at the other side is compliancy to being able to advertise certain things. 
what has been going on in the industry of cannabis of being like, hey, what can you not say? What can't you, like, I don't, where is that compliance in marketing? What are you not, do you have what you're not so allowed to say? It's going to, obviously, it's going to change each market. It's going to change each state and like each platform is different. I'm aware, you know, I'm, I'm assuming. I've seen things like, um, like you can't obviously allude to selling there's certain words like you can't say they would ban it, ban it on uh, the news here in Oklahoma. And I would see things like, you know, obviously shadow, there's a thing called shadow banning. We all hear about and like these certain words like the alluding to like the sell. But the same thing is going on with too is like only fans shadow like they're getting. Banning. Why don't you explain yeah, that shadow, more? So shadow, shadow banning is like you're still like up and operational but very limited to your audience mm -hmm. and it kind of they kind of filter off your engagement and as i hear it's like temporary so like in the because if you keep offending uh their policies and procedures or coming close to it they will and eventually shut you shut you down like turn you off but uh really honestly the thing is like i explain to my clients and you know people i you know engage with is like it is like you talked about like storytelling story framework right and story brand uh when you really find that balance between education and entertain mm -hmm. that's right where the sweet spot is where you want to stay and like when you really look at your your patients as patients that's the key is like understanding to, to step back and talk to them and have a conversation you're not just slinging stuff to them you can't you know you can't sell online you can't sell in the bio link in the bio so you need to be more engaging with our communication, right? And if you're only limited to a photo in, you know, and certain words, you know, it really, t you got to step back again and ask what we're doing here and why, and is this the right method to the madness? Because I tell you right now, it's like, if you was to, if you was to shoot bud, only bud and put on an Instagram, that Instagram is going to be pretty damn boring. Mm -hmm. Simple as it is. It needs some, it needs some depth. It needs some, um, you know, education, like educating stuff, some graphics, some in, engaging content that would make us really why, you know, want to care about it. And obviously that's where influencer marketing comes in. So people, a lot of individuals, a lot of businesses, they use, utilize influencer marketing. So the individuals out here creating the content and they're just curating it or repurposing it. So, and then that eliminates that you're not selling it. I'm just sharing cool content, guys. Like, hey, <laughs> And, uh, but you're getting the point across, you're creating that emotional storytelling connection between the brand and the experience, right? And so you're seeing the, the uh, rappers smoke the blunts, you're seeing the, you know, the engagement with your product, product placement, whether it's a uh, all natural vegan and they're in all high, they're on a hike and they're, hey, you know, so again, influencer marketing, that's the stuff that really gets your stuff across and like understanding your market, like there's different levels and tiers to that. But um, yeah, I've been seeing I've been seeing some of that, and that's been a lot of success. And because uh, I've shot some campaigns and different things I've been asked to do, and that was fun, you know, and ex exchanging that. Um, it's been like being in um, this business during uh, COVID and through the pandemic. Um, How has that so yeah been um, affected? Uh, probably broad, also across everybody. But what what is it that you've seen? Yeah, man, it is definitely affected things that's happened over here too, because I shoot uh, events. And so I took a hit there and uh, because also, but they did too, you know, that's another way they can network and get their name out there and rub elbows with people in the marketplace and see their products being seen firsthand or getting to talk to and like, you know, again, nobody's going to sell your product better than you. So when we lost the events, that kind of hurt. And then on top of that, so but at the same time, we, you know, that's when you see a pandemic when cannabis becomes essential workers. Like, isn't that a weird twist? You know, so. Um, that was a, you know, that was a weird twist. And um, not only that, you were able to market through during that time. So you were able to actually market um, uh, cannabis as a, 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 as a healing agent, I guess. Yeah, definitely. Definitely an uh, alternative to, uh, you know, what's going on, you know? <clears throat> so so I, I definitely seen a difference in the market, though, when it, when it COVID happened. 
Yeah, I think that um, when it comes to what people are trying to do right now is they're trying to find out some consistency in, in having open channels like, okay, can I do this consistently? Can I do this consistently? Because running even you watch guys, obviously the big guys like Jake Pauls and all those guys right now, that's names are massively huge, but reality is they've been using video the entire time. And we've basically been following their, their entire story um, for a long time. Let's uh, dive in just a little bit um, about a story brand and kind of what some of your philosophies or maybe a structure that we can talk about um, that, of people that don't understand a, a story brand. Maybe you can walk us through uh, what a story brand is. Uh, maybe we can open up some conversations about that. Yeah, for sure. So like, kind of like to play off of what you kind of said there is like the bro Paul brothers and, uh, you know, kind of, you know, whole, document their whole experience in life. And <clears throat> that's one of the big things that I tell my clients and people I really work with is like, don't be afraid to take that selfie. Don't be afraid to, when you're in the moment of like a big sell or, a, a big you know big growth in your business without the camera take a selfie with that individual or just to document that experience because i guarantee you just like when we said like building a story brand is like understanding your brand values or your brand your values as a person right and so if you understand those you, just, you don't just like hey my name's wes i believe in collaborate you know collaborative effort and synergy or something like right you don't say those things so you say we we communicate in stories like man you're not going to believe this but blah 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 blah. i you know big triumphant come back and explain all that stuff because you see that we're down in the trenches and when you're really hurting and when you're overcoming and you use perseverance and consistency to get yourself out see those words when i communicate those words you tune your ears perk up for those words they're like holy shit he really does show this like oh shit like he really is like living through that experience and then when you can flip over and show them the photo that connects to that crazy moment, right? You get more credibility. You get more, uh, you know, this authoritative figure in that, 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 that lane and people see you more credible. And uh, that's the biggest thing I tell my clients is like where, where they can start something for free and like something that's easy uh, is be more vulnerable, be a storyteller at your own. Cause again, you're telling your own story. But understand when you're telling your story brand, like you're not telling this is like, oh, hire me. I'm, I'm everything. I'm the greatest. You're talking about your brand, how it can come in and talk, you know, and deliver greatness. And like what, you know, like if I'm here in your journey and your path, I'm explaining to you how your path is amazing. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be so much better with my product. <laughs> and uh, here's yeah. why, yeah, you know, I and here's. I guess that's even why some people, you know, you'll have a documentary made of a certain person or biography or something like that. And then you'll basically go watch or that person will go watch it. They'll be interested in watching it. I mean, I guess yeah. it's a play on your story, right? So when it comes to uh, story brands and things like that, what is one of the areas that people should spend most of their time um, in, in the story brand? I've shared the story, story brand, the book, which right here yeah with miller donald donald great, miller great book great book. great book um and i've read it multiple times just so i can extract those lessons <laughs> yeah his lessons are great um <clears throat> we do it in some of our offer uh, creations and things and really um one thing i really like about it is that you can really look at kind of an alchemy or you can look at it like this sense of like oh i was on this journey and this is what happened to me Mm -hmm. And then I think that one of the things about storytelling, um, I was actually fortunate. My father did a lot of storytelling when I was a kid and I got a lot of stories told to me and things like that, um, which probably keeps me running my mouth long enough. But ultimately, <laughs> but ultimately, there's parts of a story. And I think that one thing people probably miss out is, or you know, maybe it's a sad thing is when you start to really understand how people put stories together and your emotions, you start to look at commercials and movies totally different. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> I totally agree with that. Like when I was getting into the branding side of my business, and like I said, I had to diversify. So as I started developing video fo or photo video and then social media and the marketing side, I really dove into the branding side because it was all about like, what's the you know, if you want to elevate yourself, like ask the higher level questions, 
And that got me obsessed with what can, you know, drew people in and connected people and what, why I was such a brand advocate for myself. Like what, what drove me to connection with these brands. And I was doing dissections of uh, Nike, obviously Apple, uh, Dove. And when you really start listening to like understanding why and how a brand is connected and what, what we look for in a brand to connect us, you can see like through like, like you can see the rhyme and reason behind their editing behind the uh, you know the audience they're talking to because they start talking like that's a book that everybody every entrepreneur should read is the phil knight story um shoe dog a phil knight oh, story phil knight story okay yeah because it's, it's it's the con it talks about the 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 building of what is now known as nike mm -hmm. And how it started from blue ribbon uh, shoes and how it's developed and grew as grown into like a, a major, obviously, corporation now. But that is the really understanding like too, and uh, the level of coming up as an entrepreneur is like, you know, with these battles and these lonely nights and these awkward, you know, battles we go with ourselves. That book right there really, you know, if you really dissect the lessons, which I did is like, it was just a struggle. It's going to be a struggle, but you only get better once you keep persistent, stay consistent, keep moving forward and keep busting your butt and keep pushing, you know, driving the message, driving the passion, right? And uh, that's one book I pulled that extracted that away is like, oh, you know, these are going to be hard days, but that's just natural. That just comes with wanting to be a business owner. And if you can deliver those stories and those triumphant like opportunities, those are that's your ammunition to your story brand. That's the ammunition to your marketing. That's ammunition to find your mission, your vision, your brand values, mm -hmm. and all that connects to your how you connect your social media. And that's what keep creates that engaging, you know, back and forth with your audience is like understanding those brand values and how to deliver those is the you know the most effective and efficient way you can. Do you like to try to have the owner as the subject or, or, or the hero or whatever that would be? Do you like that? <clears throat> that? Um, or do you, when you do a more deep into a brand, you like to actually use outside forces instead of the actual owner? Not everybody's a Richard Branson. Not everybody. Yeah, Elon exactly. Branson, you know? And I, I explain that too, is like, if they have it in them, you know, a personal brand supports a professional brand. Look at Gary V, Vayner Media. Look at Grant Cardone, Cardone, you know, University. And, it, and the list goes on and on and on. You know, that's why I said too, is like, yeah, Russell Brunson, Elon Musk, these are guys that are out in the front runner of their business, you know, and using their personal brand to to support. So I think it's a two for, twofer. You think it's if you like, can do it. It's a magnet. You think you, you think that you just, just you, it's just who you are. Like you. Yes and no. I think it, people can it's really it's called a charismatic leader, right? And yeah, I wonder if that's a it's it a natural thing. Honestly, um, I don't think it is. Uh, I think people can have they just have to have what's inside them to like not quit or that thick skin, that able to t ability to not think, not take take things uh, so deep and like it leave it some you know so, you know superficial basically be able to be superficial on the skin and have that tough exterity i think it could be adapted i think you know i believe in neuroplasticity and i believe in the fact that you can program your body and program your mind to go through certain you know extremities and a lot of things a lot of growth will happen and abilities because if you if you give an adult a framework an idea and like this is how you build it from back to forward but you just kind of, you got to give your, you know, you give it your all and have, be persistent and consistent and you'll get there nine times out of 10. I think they would, you know, give it, you know, give it a shot at least. Right. But again, we don't have it in us. We don't have to control somebody, you know, keep them accountable. Like they have to keep themselves. Like that's where I feel like that separates people is that inner, you know, keeping yourself, um, you know, uh, accountable, right. Holding yourself to that and stay in discipline. I think that's the, what we're initially separates us because we initially like don't that. pick. When you were younger, were you like we, When you were much younger, <clears throat> were you like that? Yeah, I was. I come, you know, I grew up on a farm and I wrestled when I was a kid and I wrestled since I was a five, like five years old, since I was, as soon as I could. Uh, my brothers were wrestlers and my whole families were competitors. So I think that competition is really what's what driven me and give me like, a strong foundation of ambitious foundation because I knew wrestling in uh, high school. Yeah. 
Yeah. And that really gave me, and I got my first jujitsu book when I was in high school. And so that kind of, and I watched the UFC when I was growing up on VHS and so as I would always want to box and like, you know, and punch and kick and power, you know, play power Rangers, Ninja Turtles. That was what I had grow, growing up. Yeah. And so that's all I ever wanted to be. So as soon as I got out of high school, uh, I joined a Muay Thai uh, mm. school and I started doing jujitsu there. And that when I came to Tulsa, I really got into it again. And like, uh, I dedicated myself to it and I quit my job and started full-time fighting and that was a hard life and it, but it taught me a lot about myself and uh it was it was an insane time i was young enough i could do it you know and i loved it and it was a great opportunity it's, it's, but the martial arts is like really what helped me well i can't get away from all these people that i know that do martial arts and also do business that it's just like another one right i mean it's it, you're another example of that and i think that i think that really also um what you just said i think we can talk a little bit about is like when I say the word framework, what does that mean to you? Um, I, I kind of think of like that as like a roadmap, almost like a scaffolding. Like I know if I get to here, I can do this. If I can do this, I can do this. And so to me, when I think of framework, I think of just like, yeah, like how things are built, scaffolding or, you know. I think that um, even the more I learn and the more that I try to learn new things and get <coughs> how powerful the actual framework handed to you, you know, I think so much, uh, so many of us in business and things that we do, we go out and we have this ambition, but if we just had the framework, then we can be ourselves. And I think that even you're um, like talking about story branding and things like that. And we can talk about, you know, basically um, where you were at and then where you went and then where you wanted to go and then what did it take for you to get there? So there's like your framework, but I think that um, the people that get good and can get creative is when they've burned that framework so many times that it's just like that rabbit that just lets, you know, it's finally found its trail, you know? And once that framework can be played in, you kind of got to have some repetition to maybe back that up, you know? Yeah, I totally agree. And I, th I think that, it's probably like acting, right? When, when you watch actors and then all of a sudden, you know, uh, I don't know, what was it? Liar, liar. I think at the end of Liar, Liar, there was a scene and um, they were in the court and it was like the outtakes or so. And she was, he said something to her and then she yells, uh, over, over actor is what she yelled at him. And it was like internally funny or whatever at the time. But what really it made me think was like, yeah, once you know what you're doing, you can become yourself. I guess that's where I'm getting at. <clears throat> and that's where help you be help help you say, look, if I stay in this lane, I can be me because I'm still in the lane. <laughs> I can drive yeah. whatever I car I want as long as I'm in the in the right lane. Does that sound like video to you or in and people that you actually like would video for something to become themselves? Well, that's, yeah, that's just like that's business, that's psychology to me. Like when I think about that, when you're able to let go of these things and like that hold us down like that's psychology that's that's why i like to tell people i'm a brand therapist because when we really start doing uh workshops and exercises with our clients it's just an exfoliation of certain uh questions that we ask that strategically extract these things from them because <clears throat> we understand that individuals like to talk about themselves right and if you start letting them talk about their passions they'll go down these tangents and it's I walk, I've walked that life of creativity of, you know, holding the camera in my hand to building websites, to understanding like how business is marketed. So I can see the very analytical side and strategic side. Plus, you know, like with jujitsu, it's, it's constant, you know, calculations and playing chess with the body. Yeah. And at the same time, I can create assets like videos and very strong photography that's very, has a you know, strong narrative. So I understand that kind of what, what it takes to do both. And so when we ask these certain questions, it allows them to either A, find like clarity and find direction. And then, or B, like it's find the substance, find essence, find, you know, depth within what you're saying, because we add, go lower, go deeper. I see what you're talking about, but go deeper, you know, and you're able to take them down this process and walk them down here. And the, and then, because that's the thing, if there's so many options here in front of a, an entrepreneur, we'll 
uh, sensory overload, like, because we just think too much about like how things are developed or things I can do or things we should do. And that's one thing too, is like an entrepreneur is like, there's that level you too, you asked about using, whether we're using cell phone photos or well curated production, high level production, at what level do we stop that? Yeah. Right. Or start and stop. Or start. Sure. Yeah, exactly. And it's the same thing with, you know, you know, entrepreneurship is like, when do we cut that level of uh, delegation? When do we let something go that, you know, we're all the time, I'll just do it. I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll, I'll, I'll do it better. You know, I can do it better. Nine t- and that's when you ask that's that because that goes with that same question is when is the time when I'm ready to let this thing go? And it's clear enough to be concepted by, you know, understood by the other, you know, creative and you can be received and your vision is seen and heard. So that's where I really started understanding that because that gave me a lot of clarity in my business is once the, you know, they, they had an understanding of where they're trying to go, right? They understood who and how they're talking to each other because <clears throat> that's one of my core values is understanding efficiencies. Mm-hmm. You want that efficiency in your life, in your mind. So when you do start talking on camera, start talking about your product, your service, who you are, you have this clarity and confidence about you because you're not like, oh, what, what should I say? What should I do? Well, who am I talking to? Because you, if you clear your mind and clear the runway you, you just, and you understand your brand values and how these stories interlocked and are intertwined with your message, you just got to talk and it just comes out so nat- natural and more, you know, so effortlessly and you can be, and that's where connection, the rapport happens. You're able to keep contact. Those are those uh, techniques I was talking about earlier is like eye to eye or, you know, using hands gestures, tonality, um, and just different ways to understand. Like when you say those stories over and over and over, just like the comedians, you can get, make them tighter, get to the punchline quicker. You can really learn, like see who's engaging, who's leaning in mm-hmm. and then who's ignoring you, who's swiping on their phone. And you use that, take that data away where every time you go network, every time you go, uh, you know, do whatever you need to do to sell in your business's message, take advantage of that. And you're like, oh, okay, so this needs to, uh, you tweak it. You, t- you assess the situation and you tweak it. And that's the best thing I could tell people too, is like when they can able to do that stuff in, without without hiring me just something free you know just well i think doing the process. you probably a book that um you would probably be aware of is the alter ego book um, um so basically the concept of the alter ego um is to give yourself a different persona so that you could attack that task or that situation in a, in, in in a manner that the other person wouldn't be able to do it and yeah. so it's not so much having a different personality, like, you know, split personality or something like that. It's really um, calling upon somebody else that's inside of you and saying, when I'm going to go do this, I'm calling upon this person. And I think that a lot of people in acting, that is the become, right? And I think that mm-hmm. it's like to become, you have to literally engulf who that person is. And I think in video, one thing that you were sharing is like, you got to do it. You really have to be that person. And they're really Yeah, hard. exactly. And that's so hard. I mean, it, if, you, <clears throat> if you've been doing this and gone on it, it there's so many times I'm just like, that was, who, who am I? Like, and you're trying to sell sometimes instead of just being you. So again, that's understanding like, yeah, we're not always trying to sell. Like a good book obviously is um, <clears throat> Gary V's Jab, Jab, Right Hook. So you give, 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 and then you ask for the sell, right? Or, and, it's, and that giving is all about like the different touch points of your marketing, right? A different delivering of your brand story, whether that's a graphic, whether that's a photo or video, the more that the, your audience is engaging, that gives you another opportunity to give another story. And you're trying to get this, because at the whole time, we're trying to get trust is transparency, right? Like I'm trying to trust you. I want to be able to know that you know what you're talking about or you do what you say you do. And uh, so each time that we engage with some content, that gives you another opportunity to say something else about, about yourself and you get to deliver another brand value. And before, before long, you know, that's when you're, you have the opportunity to, to ask for the sell, you know, cause you take them down this certain levels of engagement, mm-hmm. just like click funnels, right? You, there's certain uh, landing pages that you land on 
and you ask them and you start getting them to funnel to the right direction. Because at the end of the day, you know, you have to be about the audience. You have to be about the customer, the consumer, the patient, whatever you, whoever you're speaking to, whoever you champion, you have to be able to speak to them, have empathy for them and just listen and develop the content around that. You can't be shoving nothing down the wife's throat. You can't, you can't like, you know, make somebody buy something. So the first one who like gives away and teaches is the one, the first one to win. Is like you teach your secret sauce and then because at the same at the end of the day like whether they go with you or not like you're just trying to help them you know so there's so much comp you know there's so much uh work out here there's you know there's no reason to compete against each other that's why you know a big thing at one trip media is like collaboration mm. i love to collaborate and because my audience is going to be way different than your audience mm. and where you're from in the world they're just such a bra huge you know vast you know ocean of opportunity that out here that that really comes back to who used to do it really well is a lot of the core industries uh like your skate industries and certain mm -hmm. industries all those industries did that collaboration so well um and they found that it works really well with the youth because you know that's introduction into new into new brands supreme did it i think uh, a lot of yeah. that um and I, and I think maybe that's a great conversation as well is is video collaboration um what are some ways that people could do video collaboration <clears throat> so it depends on um cast right we got podcast. yeah exactly yeah it really depends on your audience or who you're really trying to get in front of um we help a lot of our clients find strategic we call them strategic partners but you can call you can call them whatever you like but uh or like influencers but those influencers are still going to be different than a strategic partner like a strategic like an ambassador right an ambassador would be a strategic partner so aligning with who is either going to boost you, right? And uh, who's going to elevate your audience or like, I, like when I mentioned it to you, it's like, I really feel like if you're in the marketing or business entrepreneurs, if that's your audience, I really feel like I could have something to offer. Sure. And so I think that's something your audience would really pick up from if they're trying to develop a business or trying to get their name out there. Um, so that's where we're, you strategically think about who, how to collaborate and really what to say, whether you're trying, or even businesses, like if you want to be an influencer or an ambassador and you reach out to these big brands and you really honestly have an honest um, higher purpose, like when I say higher purpose is like a mission, a goal in mind for developing your personal brand, not just to get free shit, right? I was just I'm not. Say, did you just call out shallow influencers? <laughs> yeah, like that's the thing. Like, because I, hey, man, like it is my business, <clears throat> you know, and I do utilize influencer marketing. Sure. So I, I don't want to say that it's not existent. I just don't like to use the whole word influencer, right? Obviously, that's so crazy and weird. But also, too, is like I've talked to individuals when they just want to get free stuff. And it's not it's not about that. Uh, because, again, they you're you're a small drop in a big ocean. So again, they can go to the next person or if there's a whole level to businesses, they get a budget to give free shit to people. You're never really going to go over that level, but maybe that's where you start and that's fine. You know, exchange for product is always good, but that I'm not saying that's bad, but the thing is, if that's the only mission, you're going to run into slim pickings and then your social media platform is going to look all shot to hell. And then is, nobody's really going to want to work with you because there's really no rhyme to reason. Um, yeah, I speak the cannabis industry and like that's really who I champion because of the higher purpose that I have. Yeah. The things that the, the cannabis did for me, the cannabis plant and what I see is doing for the community around. So that's really, again, why I'm champion that industry. But it's in my- It's definitely interesting to watch um, in, in yeah. the, uh, on the advertising and marketing side. It's very interesting to see the way that they try to portray themselves because it is- still a sting under algorithms. Nobody's out there really looking at every, I mean, there's just no way, there's just it's too much. So the approvals and things that you get out there, what is gonna be available and not? And I guess that, I guess that in advertising, I don't know if it was the smoke, but I guess where I was getting at is, you know, you go to a, a smoke shop or something like that. And you're like, you know, this apparatus is not for tobacco. You're like, if you use this five foot apparatus to do tobacco, <laughs> you're gonna be in a lot yeah. of trouble. <laughs> yeah so, so they say lamp or something. yeah exactly so in that the, the thing is that i believe that the cannabis industry on a marketing level is running through that same conversation which is like how much 
we can just say it like this is it's kind of it's kind of disheartening that you have a law that says no but if you if you portray it this way then we'll give you a loophole and get away with it yeah and that's when it really breaks down onto your brand values how to deliver those brand values i think and to really understand like okay so if this is the, that's what I'm saying too, like my techniques and my framework really doesn't work if you don't have something to higher purpose, you know, like if you have something that's worth really getting out there and creating some traffic around, cream rises to the top and like you just got to be just consistent and persistent. And like, that's what I'm saying, like even the <clears throat> influencers, they can make a living and, you know, go after these businesses and brands because the cannabis businesses and they utilize influencer marketing, but uh, being understanding who you champion and really speak to that audience and you'll start finding the pain points and then really develop the content around those pain points like how to again find solutions for those pain points and teach that first one to teach it is the one who wins and so again who you champion really like hone in on your niching <clears throat> for those who don't know just niching is just a group right just be really lean into a, a group and uh and that's what we really did at One Trip Media is because I understand with cannabis, there's so many different facets. There's the illegal side, obviously THC, uh, and then the illegal or the legal side with lighting, soil, pots, you know, different things, you know, that really connect that community, even uh, transport, right? Those are transport companies right now. And so when you understand that, there's so many variables out here that there, that's again, there's so much competition out here why why you know try to see your competitors as you know evil and like want to destroy them whatever but you ought to, you should learn understand that's where you come into your position of your brand is like understand what your audience is wanting what your competitors are offering and you find your sticky in the middle somewhere right you find your spot and you dive a mile you know 100 miles deep and will people will see credibility, they'll see authoritative, and they'll see, you know, that you are knowledgeable, you are a specialist. And that's one thing that One Trip Media did is like, that's why it took a little bit for us to find our lane in the first few years. Uh, Cause like I said, we was only creatives first. And I was like, oh, I do not want to compete here. There's, this is the race to the bottom of the barrel because people are doing it themselves, you know, cell phones and not, to- Not only were you against the, the, the actual product or, or the people doing it, you're also against an actual device. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I just like, I knew I didn't want to die on that hill, but I knew it was a huge asset to be able to understand that stuff. So I, I and I really loved it, but that's where I, I wanted to, uh, you know, become a brand strategist. I needed to become like, and fill that role that my business needed. It's so one trip media. Uh, well, if, if you were to emotionally explain this uh, transformation or so, when someone is hesitant, they're like, look, you know what? I do have this, I have these situations, but I think if I hired somebody to do the video and they do all this, once you do that, what is it that you see comes alive? Like, I like, I like to call it like, <clears throat> you become a superhero, you know, it's like you kind of attached yourself to something you didn't have, but what did you find? For yourself, so, you watch so for myself. No, for, oh, you watch God. a client go from un doing their thing to all of a sudden that, like this production production. What is it? So I see a lot of clients, and when they start seeing the fin, I see it mostly with the finished product. I've been seeing it a lot with obviously when we deliver the final video. I've seen a lot of emotional connection to that, and they see things become tangible. Thing the brand or the message becomes real, you know. Uh, and I've seen it too when we've done like brand messaging you know, and work on the brand statement. And when people really come together to like, oh, like, yes, that really sounds like us, you know, and they can hear their voice coming back to them. That's another amazing moment too, because you start seeing like their dreams and their visions come alive. And that's one of the hardest parts about being an entrepreneur is just convincing like, oh, you see it too. <laughs> I'm not just crazy. <laughs> yeah. And I think that doing video also, I think that you get a lot of um, self gratification when you get somebody that maybe was shy they were nervous or they felt like the video wasn't going to come out good and they go well, that wasn't my best one and then they see it and then they're just like wait a minute that, that was yeah good. yeah and that's what i tell myself too like when even as a video creator you're only as good as your last video 
So always look for, seek for improvement. Too, I guess it goes for everything, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, and so that I tell myself, that, you know, I, cause I'm a, I'm a perfectionist at heart. I understand that about myself. So I'm constantly trying to find more efficiencies. I'm all, you know, all the time trying to look to where, how I could be better. And so the same thing goes with the video editing and the video process, or even like the consulting sessions and stuff. Like I really try to, what's the easiest way to like, and most enjoyable way to extract this information and deliver an experience with my audience or who I'm with, you know, and seeing like, and even like videotaping people to, to the transition from me behind the camera to, to me in front of the camera and, and have that transition and understanding the difference. Um, yeah, it just takes you getting out there, but when you have the framework and understanding of who you're talking to and why you're talking to them. And if you understand how much time you really have, it really helps them break it down to quadrants and segments. And then it, then you just got to uh, obviously keep the conversation, the, you know, the tonality up and down and just be intentional with your words. That's the best thing too. What would you say? Um, there's many times um, in design also. Um, and I used to always say it like this, but um there's a difference between production video and then there's then there's an art mm. where do you think people get stuck in there because i think that there's somewhere in there where people don't produce i mean, I mean i'm i'm guilty of it no yeah and that's you're right because again you you fall back onto that like okay so a lot of times videos get put on the wrong platform it could be either too long and too drawn out and like the story is like too like Oh my God, this is not a theater to production. Like we, sh you, why is it this long? Get to the point, mm. right? It falls on the wrong audience again. Or if it was just a 15 second spurt, it's not enough to talk about the product in its entire campaign. So that just, it's just different. It's the wrong tool being the, for the wrong thing. That's all it really is. When you, cause you got to look at these different, like the story vertical videos are a different purpose than a landscape video or banner, you know, these graphics. And so I think that's where we get confused on where our delivery is of those. I think that's the one thing that we, because we think well, just one video is good to blast on all platforms when it's really not. And different things need to be understood, like your, your, who your, where your audience is and consume, where they're consuming their content is going to be different for different, obviously, uh, pro, you know, profiles, different demographics. We all consume content very differently throughout the different, you know, throughout the time too, the yeah. days, what, what time of day we are. Wait, did you shoot uh, jujitsu and martial arts as well? Did you get yourself um, onto that side that scene? Yes, uh, yes. I no. saw, I think I saw a picture of you at uh, 1FC. Was that 1FC or you? No, it was UFC fight night. Yeah, it was like, a, it was a fight night. It was here local and we was doing some, media? Uh, I shot a lot of, yeah, I was down there on, during the fights that night and uh, running across, running everywhere. I got to shoot a little recap behind the scenes and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was an awesome experience. And because I have a lot of people, that are, I have to train with a lot of different competitors. So I just have that gravitation towards it. And I, of course, so when I was in the ring, I definitely had to get some photos with the, uh, you know, USC behind my shoulder. I was like, oh, because that was, that's one of my goals is to actually shoot for the UFC one of these days. Um, you know, because I've learned in my time of shooting is photography. Like I shot uh, music festivals and different concerts. I love shooting that energy. And I've learned different ways to how to, you know, get media passes, you know, different things and like how to work for these organizations and, or, you know, and how to get in there and find work with these guys. Now, some of them, you know, it's a dime a dozen, but it's just like, a, uh, you know, so they're going to use a bunch of different people. So it's not like any kind of thing that's crazy, but it's something that you check off on your own belt, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, shooting for certain things, like being able to shoot for the PBR, that was a very fun, ex you know, exciting experience. Oh, that would be crazy. Yeah, they put me in the middle of the arena. That was an amazing uh, to shoot, yeah. Like where, the like where the clowns run and stuff? Yeah, they put us inside this cage. It was like, sh it was like swimming with sharks, right? It was so cool. Well, the question would be if, if you've gone to a rodeo, uh, it's the scenario, where I, don't, where I don't even know what they call that. Maybe someone will remind me, but they do that game where they'll sit in the middle and then they'll have like oh, yeah. four guys and then they'll just let the bull go. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, they sometimes they'll play poker or musical chairs with that That's as well. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, my little brother, he actually is a bull rider. I fought, I did the whole MMA stuff and then he he rode, he rides bulls. He still does it to this day. He's 23 years old. He's giving to hell. 
Well, this has been an incredible experience. Uh, Wes Cunningham, you're an incredible guy, incredible guest. Uh, you shared uh, in-depthness to, to this group. I think it's incredible uh, what you're doing. Why don't you go ahead and share with everybody where they can maybe find you and uh, maybe they have a cannabis campaign or, or something like that, or where can they find you? For sure. Um, definitely. Uh, you can find me at my handles at One Trip Media um, at, on Instagram or Facebook. Uh, Shooting for Balance is my personal one on Instagram. And, uh, and that's the thing, too, is like when I realized, you know, that I niched in for the cannabis thing and that's who I was going to champion. It it wasn't so much, you know, even on the subsurface level uh, as saying I'm just sell dank or we just have cannabis. We just have we it was understanding the higher purpose. Like you have a unique selling position and I would work with those individuals that really was trying to make a difference in their community and who they're, you know, and really make a difference in their patients' lives. And so that's where, when we're looking for individuals, we don't just work for any, with anybody. We have to really work with people that have that unique selling position or that unique story that they're trying to get across because that connects to everything so much more efficiently. And then they can able to really deliver, you know, quality content or quality experience to those individuals their audience and that's uh that's really what too is like it's, that framework has been extractable through other industries if you got that unique selling point and you got a good product and a good story like man like that's everything so if you guys would love to continue like have this conversation with me you know feel free to link up with me and um i will be happy to help anybody out we always do like a 30 minute consulting because just I, I like to see you know entrepreneurs succeed and you know make their own path and break away from that nine to five. I think that's something that's super special and, you know, bear, you know, being unique and finding yourself is, is amazing. So if I can help in any way, please uh, don't hesitate to ask. And yeah, thank you for having me on. Thank you so much, Wes. Appreciate you. Appreciate it. <laughs> if you like this episode, make sure you smash the like button and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Just like Nike is to athletes, Moved is to entrepreneurs.